Hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all well. I'm okay, man. Uh, my edit is not the best. Maybe a little cringe at times. So please do your best to understand the vision I have behind this. And you know, you might pick up something you might like from it. Thanks for tuning in. I recorded this over six days. <laughs> so yeah, it may sound like different people are speaking in different segments. But yeah, man, have mercy. We're all humans after all. Perfection is not tangible. Have you ever wondered, what's the snap? How do drivers propel themselves forward in transitions like that? So let me say one thing before I go on. I'm not God. I didn't create the earth. I do not know everything. Life is debatable. So if I leave anything out, let's talk about it in the comments and let's be grown up about it. No need to start any fights or anything. This is not high school. Well, back to our topic. It's quite easy to understand. For all the busy people in semi-summary, the concept goes like this. Momentum and rotational force are all about energy. So you have to ask yourself, how do I load energy into this motion? So you're either shocking the car with grip by drastically raising the rear end wheel speed. By perfectly timing it, you can get a pretty good snap out of it. Or you can simply just use steering input. Just to dive in a little bit deeper, in summary, for the people who have a little bit more time. So with the steering technique, instead of slowly and smoothly unwinding your steering, you basically delay your transition a little bit, then force the car to rapidly transition. <laughs> of seconds. Drifting is all about minimal details. And yeah, nice and easy. Now you can go home and practice it. But sadly, for the negative or for the positive, human beings are quite um, a creative species we are. Quite creative. We've come up with like so many ways to do the same thing. Alright, now let's get to the money. Please pay close attention to what I'm going to say because I'm going to say quite a bit in a short amount of time. Our first topic is steering techniques. These can be used after faints. You can use it to initiate your faint initiations. Or even using them on transitions. Simple clutch kick initiation, creating massive energy and a force the car to snap the way you want it to. You can also use kicks for transitions, they really help get that snappy predictable transition.
So when you combine the aggressive arm movement and the kick, you get this. Then what we have with Naoki's face are the same kick and arm motion but the slightly less aggressive in arm motion. But the timing is so good, the effect is quite the same if you look at it. Here's Fukada. Here's Naoki. Naoki's using the steering angle that he gets from the faint. Fukada's adding more on it and he's letting go of the steering wheel later than Naoki. And then there's using your throttle for initiation. I'm not going to talk about braking techniques in this video. But just know that the earlier you go onto your front brakes, or the earlier you use your front brakes, or handbrake in an entry. Just make sure you use them early enough for you still have angular momentum so that you get the snap and you avoid getting some understeer or the brakes actually becoming brakes because the later you use the brakes, they're just going to become brakes. It's an arguable topic but we're going to talk about it another day. We're going to talk about it another day, you know, draw your own conclusions and remember, always have your own mindset and look for proof. Don't follow the crowd. Now, we've almost reached the end of our video. We're moving to the near end. We're moving on to a topic that I absolutely love and nerd about. Uh, skip to the minutes on the screen if you don't want to hear someone talk about conspiracy theories and throttle techniques and things like that. These are things you're only going to notice if you have a bit of a musical ear to identify rhythms and things like that. Just skip forward if you aren't into conspiracy theories or throttle techniques and things and only nerds nerd about. Even on smooth transitions, amazing smooth throttle control can be used. It's where you strongly utilize the fact that turbo cars have power bands, meaning you sit right below boost and then drastically raise those RPMs before you transition and then you get that massive snap that you want. Drivers will love this technique of many. It's a world widely used technique. One of the most famous users of this technique is Andy Gray. Notice how in the wet Andy Gray won't shoot it up too high. He feels it and he's sensitive with it because you know, drifting is a feeling anyway. You work alongside what you're feeling at that moment, what's needed.
It's all about those small details I'm always talking about. And Daigo Saito. On this Notice how in the wet he uses it to shoot up doors. And James Dean also uses this throttle technique. <laughs> Then, in Japanese toge, there's an SR style that we commonly get, and I like to call that sound the two up style. It's like the moment before you transition. Irrespective of how many blips or whatever you're doing before, when you're about to transition, you give it two taps, then shoot the RPMs up. Now, we mostly use this because we don't have the same power, the same gear ratios, or specific style preferences that James Dean, Daigo Saito, and Andy Gray have it when they hold it halfway and move it up. And weird enough, James Dean also does this at times. But with him, he does it over a more broad range of RPMs. He's blipping over more RPMs than the others. And also sometimes over a low range of RPMs. It's all about a feeling of what's needed at that moment. Don't get me wrong though, Daigo Saito and Andy Gray do the two-up sound too. It's just that these two sit on the smooth preference more than the blipping preference. All I'm trying to say is that life is full of recurring patterns and drivers are all doing the same thing but in different ways. They're all lowering the RPMs then drastically shooting them up. So don't get confused. It's all the same thing just in different ways. The same thing we're expressing, just expressing it in different ways. We're all speaking, we're speaking in different languages. The same thing. Communication is communication in the end. <laughs> and last, but most definitely not least, we have this weird guy who's making all kinds of weird noises that are just all over the place, left, right and center. It's just a chaotic symphony. It's just, it's just all over the place, man. It's controlled chaos. foundations of what the sounds is making is called the Kansai style, at least I call it that. It's very similar to the two up, but in the Kansai, instead of the two tap RPMs, the number orders are all over the place and the blips are almost endless if you ask me. But in the end, they still raise the RPMs before a transition. The only difference is that it's just a difference of duration. The raises are quite far. It's like the mumble rap of throttle techniques. <laughs> <laughs> but their odd patterns make melody you can refer to as the boss of Zoku sound. 
With Samson, he doesn't raise his RPMs like the boss of Zoku to make that unmistakable melody we know them for. <laughs> Fun fact about him, he doesn't know about the boss of Zoku's existence. He actually didn't know that people blip the same way he does when they're drifting. And then we have very fast two-step throttle, which is very common too in Japan. That's basically all the throttle techniques you ever hear in drifting. Because we're all combining these weird sounds and producing whatever we feel at the moment. That's what sound is, that is melody. We are all musicians with our throttle pedals, you know. We are a reaction of what we feel at that moment. And please do comment below if you want me to do a video where I explain what throttle technique is. I have one with text, but text doesn't quite explain things as deeply as people like to hear them. And back to our topic for transitions, you can use clutch kicks for snappy transitions. And a little debatable pro tip is that you can also disengage rear grip by pulling the handbrake early on transitions while you still whilst you still have rotational energy. And also, you can use the handbrake instead of the feint after clutch kicking. You replace the clutch kick moment with a handbrake moment, and that also helps you get a snap too. close attention to each and every single style you're going to notice that each and every single style seems to have a little bit of something or some of some from something they seem to all influence each other each one seems to have a piece from another one meaning that like it's the same as different styles of martial arts they each influence each other to create one specific goal what differentiates these techniques is what was used the most inside the technique what technique brought most of the momentum Meaning, if you pay close attention, you notice that some use the same clutch kick and the same arm motion and then the same throttle and they just use all kinds of different combinations of techniques. What helped me differentiate them is which technique brought forth the most momentum, what was used the most during the technique. If you made this far, I really, really appreciate the support. Thank you guys a lot, man. If you like this or you find this a bit interesting, subscribe, like the video, share the friend or two wants to find something interesting, you know. Check out my Facebook, uh, Instagram, because every day I post something there. And if you ever want to support anything I'm doing, you can see I'm not using the best of equipment. And no man is a one-man team. If you want to support me, man, via PayPal, I'm so okay. There's my PayPal at the top. Even something as small as a dollar would really help me upgrade what I want to upgrade here. Because you can tell I'm using my phone and I'm sitting in a room at the back of the house. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah guys, I really appreciate this man. I really really appreciate this. And comment below. What do I mean to do next? <laughs>